Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about why I don't use Compact on Close in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Sienna in Syracuse, New York, one of my Platinum members. She says, hi, Richard, I've been using Compact on Close in my Access database for years without any issues. It keeps the file small and tidy, and I don't have to think about it but I've heard you mention in a few videos that you don't recommend using it. Why is that? First of all, for everybody else, if you don't know what Compact and Repair is, go watch this video. It's one of my first tech help videos I ever made. We just crossed a thousand, by the way. But compacting and repairing is something you can do on a regular basis. It reclaims unused space from your database. It rebuilds all the internal structures. Uh, it can reduce the file size dramatically, and it can fix any minor corruption or bloating problems before they get bad. So it's good to do on a regular basis. I just like to do it manually. Now you can find Compact on Close in your database options. Go to File, Options, Current Database, and then right there you'll see Compact on Close, and mine is turned off. Let's talk about when it's safe and when you shouldn't use it. When it's okay to use Compact on Close. All right, you got a simple single user unsplit database. In other words, it's sitting on your computer. You're the only one that uses it. It's for small office use, personal project databases. I got a bunch of these sitting on my desktop too, a little projects I started, a new calendar rewrite, that kind of stuff, right? That's fine. You want to compact those on close, that's okay. Um, it's for local use only, not if you're sharing it across a network. And you certainly don't want to compact and repair across the network. That can be troublesome too. Now, where can Compact on Close cause problems? Well, multi-user environments, split databases, and any database running over a network. Now, obviously, if you have a multi-user environment and you've got multiple people using the database, they should each have their own copy of the front-end database on their local machine, right? And if you're not familiar with split databases, go watch this video, right? But every user gets their own front-end, and that connects to your access back-end or whatever server you might have, SQL server, whatever it is. Now, if the users have compact on close set for their local front end databases, that's okay, because it's really only affecting them and it's on their front end PC, right? But really most of the data is kept here in the back end, unless you've got a lot of temporary tables and stuff like that, then it's okay. But every time you push out an update and then give them a new front end, it's not gonna matter if it's compacted or not. So that's really up to you. If you do write, read and write a lot of temporary data, temp tables, that kind of stuff, sure, okay, fine. You can use Compact on Close. But don't put Compact on Close on this guy, okay? You want to compact and repair your database, but you want to make sure you do it at a time when no one else is in the database. And if you go to the server and open this guy up on a, you know, on a Thursday at 3 p.m. and you got 15 people in your database, well, it might cause problems. It could cause corruption. It could lock a bunch of files. It just, it's a, just a bad idea. That's why I suggest doing this either manually when you know no one else is in the database or schedule it for a time where you know no one's in the office, right? Sunday at 4 a.m., whatever. All right, so never compact on close a shared back end, right? In multi-user environments, it can interfere with the other users if people are in the databases. It forces a write lock when closing, increasing the risk of corruption. It introduces delays if you're constantly opening and closing the database. Uh, if it fails during compact, your database might be left in an unstable state. And it could corrupt the file if multiple front ends are connected during the compact. Now, if someone just forgets to log off and you compact the back end, that's probably not gonna cause any problems. I, I mean, I'm gonna say probably. Um, like if someone leaves for the day and just stays logged on their database. And of course, there are ways in VBA to, to prevent that. But if you compact the database and no one's actually using it at that moment, you should be okay. But if you got people actively trying to use the database when the back end is compacting, I've seen that cause problems. So you want to make sure everybody's out. In fact, what I used to do years ago was I would make a copy of the back end database file or files compact those, right? Make sure they were backed up, delete the originals, and then replace the copied compacts. And that made sure that nobody was in it while I was trying to, to do my compacting. 
So best practices, front end, it's okay to compact manually or on close if you use a lot of temp objects in your front ends. Back end, you the admin should compact it regularly on a regular basis. Weekly is fine for most cases. You know, if you got a database that's being used all the time. Monthly, if not. Uh, but you should do that. Don't trust your users to do that. You can automate scheduling compacting during off hours. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And I think it's better to push updated front ends to the users on a regular basis rather than worrying about compacting their front ends, right? If you push a, a fresh copy, then you don't got to worry about it. Oh, one more thought. Sometimes users might mistake in compacting with backing up the database, and they're not the same, obviously. So make sure you have a good backup plan. Obviously, if the users just have front ends and there's no real data in those, they don't got to worry about backing up their database, but you should have a good backup copy. And of course, if you want to learn how to properly back up your database, watch this video. This video will teach you how to compact the database from the command line so you can make yourself a little batch file or a shortcut that'll handle all the compacting for you. This video will teach you how to compact with VBA. So you can compact the back end from your front end, but I do recommend doing this from the machine that it's actually on. Compacting over the network means all of the traffic in your entire database file has to go completely over the network. Run this from a front end on your server or whatever machine you're calling your server. Now I do have some templates available on my website. I have an access compactor template that will just, you tell it what your database folder is and it will compact all of the databases it finds in that folder. I know I have my database split up into like 10 different backends and um, I have mine scheduled to run at just 4 a.m. every Sunday and it just compacts everything and I don't have to worry about it. It'll keep a nice little log file for you so you can just check it once whenever you think about it and make sure everything's working. I've got a backup template that does the same thing, but it makes backups. I have mine so that it runs every day at 4 a.m. And it copies all of my database files up to my Google Drive folder that I have mapped to my G Drive. And so this way I always have an offsite copy on a day-to-day -day basis of all of my database files. And then you can run the compactor after you do the backup. Yeah, I recommend backing up first before you compact and repair because if any problems occur during the compact phase, you've got a backup of your last known good database. I have seen compact and repair corrupt a database before. It doesn't happen often, but it's possible. So make backups, make multiple backups, keep off-site backups. There's all kinds of good stuff you should do. And finally, I've got this template available on my website. This is for pushing front-end updates, right? So you got your server with, you know, your, your back-end on it. You've got your admin developer machine, right? You make a few changes to your front-end. You want to push it out to all your users. You click one button. It sends it to the server, and then the server reboots all these machines and says, hey, you got to have an update now. Or it'll do it whenever, whenever you want it to. You, you program it in when you want it to run. It can pop up a message and say, hey, there's an update. Do you want to install it now? Or you can make it so that it just does it when they start the database. Or you can put it on a timer loop, whatever you want to do. It's up to you. This is just a template that gets you going, and it, and it copies all the stuff for you. All right, so there you go. That is why I don't use Compact on close. I think I've made a pretty good point. Again, if it's just a personal access database, you've got it on your desktop or it's sitting in a folder on your machine, you're the only one that uses it. Sure, fine, don't worry about it. Just make sure you got a good backup, right? Um, don't run access databases out of file sharing folders like Google Drive, Dropbox. I have to just keep repeating that because I see so many people do it. Those cause problems, don't use it. Put it on your C drive. All right. Yes, I have a Google Drive G, but I don't run my access databases out of it. Okay. All right. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more.
Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.